Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. Today, I will talk about two issues. Will there be a last chance to take Xi Jinping down before the CCP's 20th National Congress? And who is Xi Jinping's biggest enemy? Before we move on, please make sure you subscribe or are still subscribed to my channel. Sometimes my viewers get unsubscribed without their knowledge. So it is a good idea to check once in a while. Now, let's jump on to our first topic today. Two days ago, on October 9th, the CCP's seventh plenary session of the 19th Central Committee was held in Beijing. This is the last important meeting of the CCP before its most anticipated 20th National Congress. So what is this seventh plenary session all about? Well, in the political tradition of the CCP, every five years there is a Congress with more than 2,000 party delegates and about 200 Central Committee members in it. These 200 plus members make up the Central Committee, also often referred to as the Party Central Committee. And during their five-year term, they attend seven plenary sessions, such as the first plenary session, the second plenary session, all the way to the seventh plenary session. So the seventh plenary session is the last one of the Central Committee for the past five years, which is usually held a week or so before the next National Congress for the final preparation of documents and procedures. From this, we can see that this seventh plenary session is indeed an important meeting. However, for such an important meeting, the CCP's mouthpiece Xinhua only published a less than three nine short report, altogether with only 119 words without any photos or videos. Another one of the CCP's mouthpieces, CCTV, didn't do its own TV report at all and only recarried Xinhua's less than three line report. The report says on the morning of the 9th, the seventh plenary session of the party's 19th Century Committee was held in Beijing. Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the Central Committee, made a work report to the plenary on behalf of the Central Political Bureau and explained to the plenary on the discussion draft of the report of this 19th Century Committee to the 20th National Congress of the Communist part of China, Wang Huning made a statement to the plenary on the discussion draft of the Constitution of the Communist Party of China Amendment. Well, that's all in the report about the seventh plenary session. We can't really get any, any useful information from this official report. There is a saying among overseas Chinese commentators that the fewer the words are, the bigger the problem is. How big is the problem? Let's watch a short video first to see how tight the security was in Beijing on October 8th, the day before the seventh plenary session was held. <laughs>
转不了圈了，更转不了。你看这边哪有？现在天门啊，基本也就没让灯。我们现在今天先到天门来了。现在啊，天门是自行车不让走，行人不让走，呃，往警察是三步一岗，五步一哨，看看啊，现在警察是二十米一个警察，呃，就是十米一个警察，十米一个警察，拿着红的指挥棒，啊，对对对，就拿指挥棒，人也不让走，是呃，那个自行车也不让走，什么摩托车呀、啊、电动车一律不让走，我们是开着汽车呢，还还是冲我们这摇呢。天门前头一个人没有啊！大家看啊，全是他们的啊！对对对对，一个人没有，所有晃的人全是警察啊，一个人没有。哎，你看天门广场这边一点灯没有，什么感觉没有啊？哎，不是，你看看，哎呦，这奇了怪了，一个人没有啊！这是不是要限行啊？我觉得不是，不不是，不是，是不是什么意思呀？是没明白，这是要限行吗？一点没有节日气氛，一点点节日气氛都没有啊！还敢发呢？嗯，哎，你这就是。So you see, an ordinary resident in Beijing was surprised by the tight security and lack of festival atmosphere in Beijing. October first is the CCP's national day. Every year, the public holiday is as long as one week. So in theory, October eighth should still be counted as the festival time, and in common years there should be a lot of people visiting there. From the tight security, we can only say that Xi Jinping is far from feeling secure about the prospect of his third team. Why isn't Xi feeling secure enough? Because. Also, most people believe that she won't enter any major challenges at the CCP's 20th National Congress that is going to be held on October 16th. That is in just five days. There's still about 10 days time window in which Xi Jinping's fate could change. What is the 10 days time window all about? According to the CCP's rule, in theory. After the seventh plenary session of the 19th Central Committee is finished, the function of this 19th Central Committee, as well as Xi Jinping's role as the General Secretary, is also finished. Before the next Central Committee is elected at the 20th National Congress, the entity that is in charge of the party affairs is the so-called Standing Committee of the. Presidium of the 20th National Congress, and the members and their ranking inside the Standing Committee will be decided at the at the current seventh plenary session that is still going on in Beijing. This Standing Committee of the Presidium will decide all the agenda of the 20th National Congress. So that is to say, in theory, before Xi Jinping is Elected at the 20th National Congress, there is about 10 days time when the power is not in Xi Jinping's hands. It's in the hands of the Standing Committee of the Presidium of the 20th National Congress instead. So, who can be the members of the Standing Committee of the Presidium? According to the CCP's tradition, both current and retired CCP leaders can. For example, in 2007, at the CCP's seventh National Congress, the Standing Committee of the Presidium had 36 members. The CCP leader at the time, Hu Jintao, ranked first. His predecessor, Jiang Zemin, who had already retired, ranked the second. Then Premier Wen Jiabao ranked fourth. That year, when Hu Jintao got his second term as the CCP's general secretary, in 2012, at the CCP's 18th National Congress, there were 41 members in the Standing Committee of the Presidium. The first four members at the ranking orders were the same as before, but Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang, who became the CCP's The CCP's general secretary and the premier in that year also appeared in the standing committee and ranked the number seventh and eighth. 
So the fact that they appear in a standing committee showed that they were well on their way to taking over power after the 18th National Congress as arranged. In 2017, at the CCP's 19th National Congress, there were 42 members in the standing committee, but the ranking order was totally changed. Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang ranked number one and two. Jiang Zemin's ranking was moved all the way to number 25th, and Hu Jintao to number 26. They were both behind the then Politburo members at the standing committee. Xi Jinping got his second term that year. So from the order of the ranks, we can see that Jiang Zemin and Hu Jintao's power and influence had greatly decreased during Xi Jinping's first five years in power. So who will be in this year's standing committee and what will be their ranking orders? This will be super important to watch to get an idea of what will happen at the CCP's 20th Congress. Tomorrow, that is October 12th, will be the last day, last day of the seventh plenary session. The CCP may, may release the name list of the standing committee of the Presidium of the 20th Congress, as well as other documents or decisions reached at the seventh plenary session. So we may find out soon. For Xi Jinping, the one uncertainty is, despite the ranking orders, anyone inside the standing committee of the presidium could stand up and oppose Xi Jinping during the 10 days time window. For example, if Xi Jinping's most fatal political enemy, Zheng Qinghong, the former Chinese chairman, starts something against Xi and gains enough support, there could still be a possibility to remove Xi Jinping before he is officially elected. Other not two normal things people noticed are two articles in the CCP's military publications. One is an article published on the website of the CCP's Ministry of National Defense on October 7th. The title of this article is Insist on Promoting Fundamental Changes in the Way the Military is Governed. The main message of this article is the rule of law is most important for a modern day army. We should get rid of the rule of man and achieve rule of law, etc. Are you surprised to hear rule of law in a CCP article? Usually, people would expect that the CCP's army would pledge its loyalty to Xi Jinping or all the CCP. What's more interesting is the author of this article is Jiang Zijian. And at the end of the article, look at the red circle at the bottom. It is especially pointed out that the order belongs to Army Unit 31411. This army is stationed in Shenyang City, which belongs to the CCP's Northern War Zone. Remember, we talked about the commander of this war zone being replaced on September 8th. The newly appointed commander was Wang Qiang, and uh, they removed Commander Li Qiaomin. Look at the general inside the red circle reappeared at the CCP's high-level military meeting on September 21st, but Xi Jinping was absent from that meeting. That was one of the reasons why many people tended to believe the rumor that a military coup had happened. Anyway, the order of this unusual article that calls for the rule of law in the army comes from Shenyang City and the Northern War Zone. Another article was published also at the website of the CCP's Ministry of National Defense two days ago. That was the day when the CCP's ongoing seventh plenary session started. 
The article talks about how to get the CCP army well prepared in all sorts of situations and to welcome the CCP's upcoming 20th National Congress with a high spirit and first class training of effectiveness, etc. What's strange about this article? The fourth paragraph goes like this. Comrade Deng Xiaoping once pointed out that we have to base our work on the emergence of larger risks and prepare countermeasures. In this way, even if there is a big risk, the sky will not fall. With a full range of preparations to deal with the what if, reflecting the awareness of challenges and bottom line thinking. As comrade Mao Zedong had also stressed, we must put the work on the basis of preparing for the worst and prepare to deal with the worst case scenario, etc. Did you see what's wrong here? The article quoted Deng Xiaoping and Mao Zedong, but not Xi Jinping and all, who is the current chairman of the CCP's military commission. This is way too unusual. No others in CCP's China or army will make such a mistake under normal circumstances by forgetting to mention, to mention Xi Jinping. So we must say this is done on purpose. So what is the purpose? Or what kind of message does this article want to send to the outside world? We don't know and have to make our own guesses. With all this said, I'd say most people still believe that Xi Jinping won't encounter any meaningful challenges at the 20th Congress. In the past 10 years, Xi Jinping has successfully purged many of his political enemies and the influence of the remaining CCP elders has decreased drastically. Also, all the retired senior CCP elder, elders are under strict monitoring and control. All their home phones are taped and they all know this. So it is not easy for the retired CCP elders to communicate and plan something together. If they don't have enough people and support, it won't be easy to do things against Xi Jinping. There is a famous saying in China that big meetings are for, are for small matters, while small, matter, small meetings are for big matters. For especially important matters, there are no meetings at all. So this saying might apply to the CCP's 20th Congress at all. No big things will be decided at such a big meeting, as all the big matters have already been decided way before the meeting. So all the 2,000 plus att <coughs> attendees will just be like hand-raising robots. They will agree to everything on the agenda. But is it true that Xi Jinping will have no enemies at all? Or who can be his most formidable enemy? According to Gao Wenqian, a former researcher at the CCP Central Party Literature Research Center, Xi Jinping's biggest enemy is no other than himself. He has fallen into the dictator's destiny. He has neither available tenants nor credible people around him. Furthermore, if he completely overturns the established policy of reform and opening up to the outside world, all those who benefited will become his enemy, including both ordinary Chinese people and high-ranking officials inside the party. Gao Wenqian also says that Xi Jinping is the biggest destroyer of the CCP's political rules. He has broken the political legacy left by Deng Xiaoping, who abolished the lifetime tenure system. As a result, Xi Jinping will meet with endless disasters. Well, do you agree with that? That's all I'll say for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, please do subscribe to my channel. If you are already subscribed, please like and share my content and check if you are still subscribed. 
Also, I would appreciate it very much if you could go to my website at jenniferzongblog.com, jenniferzongblog.com. Sign up for membership or make a donation to support my truth-telling efforts. Thank you. See you next time.